silver dollar. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of Xbox Live Indie Games. This time we're looking at the games that were released in the week of October the 27th to November the 2nd, 2013. And we're starting off with another fine product from Silver Dollar Games. Yet another one. You know, the big money publishers like EA and Activision, they really could learn a lesson from Silver Dollar in terms of work ethic. Because I don't see them releasing a game every week. Like Silver Dollar does so well. This week they're releasing Tune Her Out. Let's see what this is about. This is practice mode. Use the left stick to move the ship. Tilt the right stick in any direction to shoot. The right trigger is a special bomb that clears the screen. You have an unlimited number in practice mode. Getting hit by an asteroid will give you an X. Don't worry, in practice mode you can't lose. Press the start button when you're ready to play. All right, I think I'm ready to play. Hey, I'm home. Hey. You wouldn't believe the day I had today. Yeah, totally. What are you up to? Just playing games. Hey, can you mute your game mic while you play video games from now on? All I hear on there is angry kids screaming and complaining. They're always whining about camping for some reason. What does that even mean? What game do you camp in? Doesn't for sound sure. like a fun game to me. What's next? Cottaging? Remember that kid that was screaming no nukes, no arty, no anything? Can't you just mute them all? What's the point in a headset if you have to mute everyone anyways? Are you paying attention to me? What did I just say? You, you were talking about muting people, I believe? Uh, mute? I, I have to buy the game to refill the bombs after every question? Oh, I can continue. I think I got a bug bite or something. It looks like it might be a spider bite. We better not have spiders in our bedroom or I'm gonna lose it. I hate spiders. Hey, we should go to the park sometime. They cleaned it up nice, so I hear. That's what Kevin was saying anyways. But what does he know? He's the one that told us to check out that pretentious bar that totally sucked. No way. Just a bunch of dudes wearing scarves and hats in the middle of summer pretending to write scripts on their laptops. Remember, it's only cool to write something if you can be seen doing it. Hey, don't you do that sometimes? I'm just kidding. But seriously, you should stop doing that. Are you even listening to me? What did I just say? Yeah, you were talking about the park. That's exactly what we were talking about. Oh, wait. No, I can't continue at this point. I either have to quit or buy. I think you get the idea of tune her out. I mean, in, in one sense, it's kind of a clever thing to be playing, you know, double dual joystick shooter, while at the same time having to pay attention to other information that's coming in from outside the game and have to answer questions about it. I don't think I've seen that before. On the other hand, it is... another game game from Silver Dollar. They, they come up with innovative ideas, let's say. Let's say they come up, they, they think differently than most game developers. With a Silver Dollar game, you're sure to see something you probably have not seen before anywhere. And they, at least I haven't. And that kind of goes for this week's Silver Dollar game. Let's tune her out. The controls of the dual joystick shooters are actually, is actually not bad. It actually plays pretty well. I didn't. It plays better than most dual joystick shooters on Xplig do. Games in where the entire game is a dual joystick shooter. I've played many that have played worse than the game on the TV screen right there in Tuner Out. Again, I don't. I don't know if anyone would buy this, but it's yet another product Silver Dollar Games has released, as they keep releasing products and keep releasing products. Time will only tell what, what'll happen when the Xbox One comes out. If Silver Dollar will continue making games for the X-Blig, will they go on to the Xbox One? Will they have to move on from XNA? Who can say? So it'll be a big challenge for Silver Dollar to try to continue on with their prodigious weekly output. A consistent output. As we move on to the next generation. But imagine a next generation version of Tune Her Out. Next, next generation graphics. High res. No, wait, this is already 720p, so never mind. Next up this week is Critter Skater. You can probably tell by the graphics what it's going for. Oh. 
Oh, don't we all hate sheep? I can't stand them. All right, hello for now, use the joysticks to find the exit portal. Okay, there we are. We have to think before we move, because once we start moving, we can't stop. See, I can move up, and I can press on the analog stick and the D-pad. I can't move. You see, we have once we stop, we have to choose the direction to move. Don't step into the wild grass. M monsters that might fit in your pocket might be in the wild grass. All right, I finished the first level. No critters to be seen. So it's sort of a puzzle game because we have to figure out which directions we can move on the map. Can't just move around willy-nilly, after all. Oh, I have to keep an eye open for tamed critters. Maybe I can catch them and have them fight the wild critters. I can use them for defense. See, the wild critters will hurt me if I enter the wild grass. I have to have my own critter. I, yep, I have to evolve the critter, avoid it fainting. There's the tall grass right there, so let's be careful. All right, I got through it all right. Hmm. Ah, oh, here we go. No, nope, that's the wrong direction. I didn't want to go that way, because now I have to go up all the way. See, I don't think the game... I think the game kind of would need to provide some sort of... Some sort of story-related reason as to why we can't change directions. When a critter faints, it gets exposed. It sure does. I mean, it's not like we're slipping and sliding on ice or anything. I mean, Grant... Oh, no. A wild critter appeared and eated us. If you could have read the incredibly small text. Like I said, we're not slipping on ice or anything, so... it's really... no reason given as to why we can't actually change directions. It's wise words from Critter Skater. Oh, we, ha we now get to choose our critter. Do we want fire? Do we want water? Do we want grass? Uh, let's go for grass, see what we get. Do we want Doberleaf as our starter? You know, it's honestly as clever a name as anything Nintendo would come up with. Let's pick it. Don't think I can... Yeah, I can't actually interact with these other ones now. Now that I've picked Doberleaf... With Doberleaf, we're gonna go to the top. Nothing in this tall grass. We're gonna win the... Critter Championships. I guess? Is that what we're doing? I don't... S they didn't really give us too much motivation for what it is we're supposed to be doing. Oh, is Critter Skater. Are we supposed to be on a skateboard? Because our sprite does not look like it's on a skateboard. No, that's def we're definitely not on a skateboard. Forget about that. You might notice those spiky shapes on the map. Those are the sheep that we hate so much. We despise them with every fiber of our being. Okay. Can check the stats. Let's do that. Okay. Doberleaf 3, he can tackle and he can cry? Alright. Sounds useful, I guess. I don't know how to get back to the main screen. Oh, there we go. Kind of wonder how large the game developer's screen must have been to not think that there was a problem with the size of the font. Okay, I don't think... Yeah, can't get up there from here. Hmm. It's relaxing music, though. As we consider the nature of our quest. To find critters. To survive in this world where we just run straight forward and then hit something, just anything in our path that blocks us. We run, run face first into it. It does not discourage us. It does not keep us from trying to find our purpose in life. The more our critter fights, stronger it becomes. We can have one critter, don't let it die.
but the less steps we take, the more the score we will get? More wild critters defeat at higher score. We cannot take steps willy-nilly the way we are. If we get stuck in glue, get confused and erm. Spinny thing. Sheep are annoying. Oh, oh yeah, okay, the Randy teleporter. That's a, Is this like some sort of stream of consciousness thing? Is this some sort of art game? Uh, maybe, maybe that's the thing. I'm not quite getting... Let's heal the critter, I guess. I'm not quite getting the hidden meaning of Critter Skater. It's subversive, I suppose. Uh, with those yellow spots, by the way, I can use those to actually change direction. We haven't gotten in a fight yet, have we? Oh, there's a lot of tall grass. We might as well get in here. Alright, here we go. Here's the fight scene. Okay. Can you read that font? I think it says Carnivore's Pains 3. I might be wrong. Alright, let's attack with Doberleaf. Okay, yeah, Carnivore's Pains is defeated. We gained one exp. But did we really gain anything? All we did was capture an animal and teach it to attack and kill another animal. We gained experience. Is that the experience you want out of life? Are we not just all running around in a green box with a brown camouflage void on the outside as we try to figure out our place in life how can we get to where we want to go while taking the least steps to get the, the most score I do hate sheep that's something we have in common we all hate sheep now, don't we? I haven't run into the sheep yet, so I don't know what they do. It must be dastardly, though, for us to hate sheep the way we do. Hey, a sound effect! Well, time has expired. The time just flies by when playing Critter Skater. As we... we ponder the meaning of things. As we wonder... Which, if it's, we're not really wondering anything, are we? I, I do wonder how this got made. I, I do wonder what the eyesight is of the person who made it. And I, I do kind of wonder what skating had to do with anything. Critter Skater leaves me curious. It leaves me wanting more. Maybe not more of the game, but just more of an understanding of how Critter Skater came to be. I need a post-mortem on Critter Skater see how this came about and was the person on any kind of drugs or medication at the time that they made it were they conscious maybe they were maybe they were unconscious at the time that could be the case but that's critter skater if you want to play some sort of really zero budget indie version of pokemon that makes you kind of feel like you're going insane i guess this does that i guess Yes. Next up is Heart and Mind 2. Heart and Mind go to championship. I did not play the first Heart and Mind. I don't really know anything about it. Let's see. What is this? About game. Heart and Mind are traveling across Poland. Okay, they want to see the championships. They have to score goals to do this. All right. They're trying to get to the championships. They have to work their way across Poland. And as we all know, if you're trying to get through Poland on foot, there will be many times that you're going to have to kick soccer balls at stuff. Okay, here we are. Oops. All right. Oh, okay, there we go. We have a soccer ball. We have to get past this barricade. We have to put it in the net. There are bombs. That didn't work. 
There's also that red switch up there. Let's see if we can kick it. I did it. Heart is doing all the work. I'm not entirely sure what mind is doing. But heart is apparently invincible. I have a limited amount of attempts at kicking this butt. The spikes don't move. It does hurt like a bill for our 0700... I guess? I think I might have made this unwinnable. Because these spikes are not going... Yeah, those... I guess they can't... I don't know. Mind is nowhere to be seen. Maybe we're just imagining mind. Maybe there is no mind. Maybe Hart just travel, travels across Poland by himself. Imagining that he has a companion. That he has a friend. And no one really wants to tell him uh, the depressing truth. I can't I can't kick the ball out of here. Okay, there we go. I wasted so many kicks. I don't think I'm going to make it this time either. Heart, very critical of our kicking ability. Oh, wait, do I only have one left? Okay, no, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have one left. This, this, these championships better be worth it. They didn't actually mention anything about the soccer championships, mind you. We might assume that's where they're going. They didn't say that. I mean, it said that the game was heart and mind, two characters, when obviously there's only one. This other one's nowhere to be seen. Oh, hold on. We might. Hmm. No. This seems like the same situation as the first time. Yep, I... The hole's not that big, honestly. Let's try it one more time. We, we can't disappoint Hart. Otherwise, he's just going to be stuck here forever, kicking a soccer ball at this wall, which probably doesn't even exist, because who would build a structure like this? No one would. I can only assume that Hart is just imagining it the same way he imagines mine. See, notice how Hart just walks through the structures. He's able to get to the soccer ball no matter where it is. I'm suspecting that none of this is real. Alright, that's probably enough for Hart and mine too. By the way, this was not the first level. Uh, this brought me to the level I was at when I tried this the first time. The first few levels are a lot easier. Uh, this is not the first one. So it does start you off with some easier levels, if that matters. If you care, you probably don't. And so, we have to leave Hart disappointed, unable to reach the championships. Oh, I'm sorry. Championship. They're going to championship. And it says heart and mind, but we know it's really only heart. Mind's been dead for years. Next up, from Evan Hartshorn Entertainment, it's Starfighter X. There we go, Starfighter X. Mega Hyper, 
Parallax Starfighter X. Well, if it's all that, then I guess we should give it a try. Alright. So we can see what it's going for. It's going for... Hey, look, it's low-res pixels, like from an old arcade game, except they're in 3D. It's not a bad look. I mean, I do like the little sort of simulating of the CRT glow around the models. That's nice. Sound effects are all right. There's no music or anything. And one thing that these space shooters from the early 80s arcades had was a good amount of sound, even if not music. I mean, you had something like Galaga, which had very distinctive sounds. You had something like Gyrus, which had great music. I still love Gyrus's music, but this does not have too much in the way of sound design going on. It also doesn't seem like it actually changes up at all from this. I mean, I don't know, maybe if I got, maybe if I wasn't playing the demo, maybe if I played longer, uh, maybe there would be different patterns or a boss? I mean, these enemies are a bit tougher. I have to shoot them twice. So maybe it does change up as you go on, but I have to say that for the amount of time I've played it, uh, I have not seen anything new beyond what we're seeing right now. Not to downplay Starfighter X, but I'm not sure if there's a reason to continue on with the demo, since I could tell you right now I could play for the rest of this demo for the time limit. And it would just be this. So, I mean, I kind of like the idea, but... It's just kind of this, isn't it? All right, that's what it looks like when you die. Starfighter X. Like I said, I kind of like the look of it, the idea of it, but it just doesn't... So far, I mean, in the demo, it doesn't seem to be anything else but this, so maybe we should move on. Next up, just in time for Hurdle Turtle's third anniversary. Hurdle Turtle 2. That's right. Hurdle Turtle's back with a vengeance. And I hope you're ready for this. It's meant for multi for four players, it seems, but we're going to play it with only one player, because I'm a rebel. We're a turtle and we can jump, as you might, you might guess that from the name. Basically, we're a turtle who loves track and field. Seems to be the idea from what I'm seeing here. We can go across these rows. Having to jump over these obstacles. Oops. Didn't quite make it. And getting out of the way of the brick walls, which we can't jump over. Oh, no. So I like the chip tune. It's nice. I guess the gameplay of this, at least this level so far, kind of reminds me a little bit of um, the Turbo Tunnel from Battletoads. I mean, we're a turtle, so I guess that's close enough. Halfway. I assume this would probably be more exciting with four players, because you'd be competing against someone. As opposed to one player in which I don't know if we can actually lose. Or maybe I can run out of lives if I hit too many walls. Not that it matters, because even if I lose, no one wins. Whereas if you're pl oh. playing with other people, I mean, then the bragging rights are on the line. For, who's the for who is the best at Hurdle Turtle? Who will set the new high score? 
Could anyone beat my high score of 11,300? Probably, but we won't know. Only levels 1 and 2 are available in the demo. Because like I said, you know, I've said it weeks before, sometimes 8 minutes is just too much to give away for free. Anyway, we're swimming this time. Hurdle Turtle, not only very well known in track and field, in land racing. It's, uh, it's quite proficient in water races too. Which is dangerous because you have these big purple jellyfish, I'm going to guess. I'm going to say that's what they are. <laughs> I was, I was thinking first octopus, but no, I'm pretty sure that's jellyfish. Anyway, the, ch the music's pretty good, I think, in, in Hurdle Turtle. I'm not sure if there's anything else here that I'm really interested in, but the music's good. That's nice. And I, I probably shouldn't be judging it, like I said, because I, I only have one player here. I'm not getting the full Hurdle Turtle 2 experience. I'm not, I don't have anyone here to compete with. Obviously, what Hurdle Turtle 2 needs is some online play. Well, not that I would be able to do that either, because we need Xbox Live Gold to do that. But I mean, potentially, if it had that, then maybe you could play it online yourself. Turtle Turtle, though, despite the obstacles, he has a smile on his face the whole time. You can't get him down. You might try, but you won't. So as we can see, Hurdle Turtle, his future challenges will involve racing through a graveyard. Hey, probably zombies. This might count as our zombie game for the week, then. Then apparently a pool of lava? Hurdle Turtle, living dangerously. And then he gets to the castle, where... I don't know, the evil overlord might be? I guess Hurdle Turtle is racing for a purpose. But that's, the, that's all we have in the trial. We won't know for sure, because we don't have the full game. That's Hurdle Turtle 2. It's pretty good music. Not so sure about anything else, but it's pretty good music. And maybe it could have been fun if, I, if someone else was here. Maybe. Maybe. Next up this week is Explodimals. You feel like exploding some animals? In a video game? It's probably good that you get those urges out here. What is... Th oh, man. That's not what I had last time. I had some kind of green dog thing last time. Now I have some kind of purple pig wearing glasses with a... A rooster's... What do you call that? I'm not sure what you call the thing on the rooster's head. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember. <laughs> okay, so we're ha we have some kind of abomination here we're going to play with. Okay, what's... What's Explodimals all about? We have to get candy and donuts and... All, all the sweet things that we like. And we got it. That is terrifying. It's probably not good for animals to be eating this stuff. I mean, really, I'm sure animals would much rather have something a bit more nutritious. But... I mean, I guess he is just a rolling head, and we can't... We shouldn't deny him... ...of the few simple comforts that his... ...nightmarish existence... ...can afford him. Okay, so now we have to press the R-stick or R-trigger, why would we do that? Well, that's why. We could throw bombs. That's why it's called Explodimals. You see, not only are we some sort of... some sort of abomination that was never meant to exist on this Earth, we also have the ability to disgorge bombs from our... from our head body. Where they come from, I don't know. But we can throw them all around, and we can just destroy the ground, and we can show these other animals what for. 
We can also get some mad air and do some sweet flips with these bombs. I'm not sure what this game is going for. Maybe it's going for exactly what I'm seeing in it. At first I thought this was some sort of cute animal game. Like that was the idea. I'm starting to think that that's not the case now. I'm starting to think that the uncomfortable feeling I'm getting watching playing this game is, is exactly what I'm supposed to be getting from this. You know, if a donut's that far down underground, should probably just le leave it alone. Probably don't want that donut. I'm just gonna say that right now. But do we really do this for the donuts, for the sweets? Or do we do it for the thrill of blowing up the, of blowing up the ground around us? of seeing the sheer terror on these animals' faces as they realize their home is about to be destroyed because of our relentless hunger for sweets and violence. I like that my animal has sort of a human sound when we get hit by the bomb. The first time I played this demo, the first animal I had did not make that sound. So the human sound I'm making is just making this even more uncomfortable. I guess it's a good thing for these other animals that the only thing that the explodables eat are sweets. Otherwise, they'd be in big trouble, I think. Obviously, our explodable. Oh, there's still one more, okay. Obviously, our explodable is the apex predator of this ecosystem. Just so happens he doesn't eat meat. Oh, look at them. They can't move, they can't get up. They're trapped, trapped forever until they die. Because of us. Because of what we did. We, we don't show remorse. Look at us. Look at that smile. The permanent smile plastered across our face. As we destroy their home. Destroy the, the only home they've ever known. What are they going to do now? All we care about is that we got all the sweets. Do we think anything of others? No. No, we don't. Oh no, it's feeding time. Sorry, cows. But we need donuts. I'm not sure who stores donuts in these sort of... airbound silos, but... I guess it's a good thing, for us anyway, that... That they are stored like that. Is that a dog? Oh. Oh yeah, man, that was a dog right there. He didn't do anything, just like the rest of the animals have not done anything. They're frozen, paralyzed in fear, at the rolling purple head that destroys all they have ever known. And does so with such a big smile. While the music never ends, just keeps on going. Barely changes, even. Hmm. Don't think I can destroy that wall. Something that an explodable cannot destroy? 
does such a thing even exist? Can it possibly be that something can destroy this? Oh, I, I guess I won. Ha, do, do any of us win? Does anyone win in Explodimals? Or is the only outcome that can happen that everyone loses? Fortunately, the demo time limit comes to our rescue. The only thing that could possibly have stopped the rampage of the rolling purple head that vomits an infinite amount of bombs. He'll always be there, though, in the back of our heads, in the back of our thoughts. He'll always be there, waiting. Just keep that in mind the next time you eat a donut. Just have a look around. Make sure that no one's around. And have another look. If you have a dog, you have any animals, check on them. Well, with a title screen like that, I can only imagine we are in for a quality product. Alright, let's try the training. We have to hone our drunk fighting skills, we have to destroy wooden crates. Alright, analog stick are our fists. Analog stick plus trigger are our feet. And the bottle will indicate how tipsy we are. Okay, here we go. All right, yeah, here we go. You might remember the seminal Xbox Live Indie Games classic, Mount Your Friends, from a few months ago. This controls pretty much the same way. Except, instead of a game about cooperation, about multiple people giving up their own individuality for the sake of the group. What, already? No? As I was about to say, this seems like it's about fighting. Asserting the will of the individual over that of the group. So while the the gameplay mechanics may seem very similar, thematically, completely different. We could do a quick fight, except we can't, because uh, we need two players for that. So, since we apparently reached the time limit already in Training Challenge, I guess that's all we're going to see of Ultimate Drunken Warrior Master. Is that what that says? Yeah, Ultimate Drunken Warrior Master. Complete Edition DLC to follow. It's, it's a joke. It's quite... That's actually not a bad... It's not a bad joke. It's Ultimate Drunken Warrior Master. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess. A tasty princess, who was the envy of all in the land. Things were peaceful in the orchard, until one day, the princess was kidnapped by the evil Doc Brock. Seeking to purify the heart of his wicked eggplant of a wife, Doc Brock hatched a plan to steal the princess's beauty from her, forever. And so began the Produce Wars. As it said, the next game up this week on Xbox Live Indie Games is The Produce Wars. I pressed A to begin. I pressed A a few seconds ago. It's, it's, I'm sure it'll begin it. Okay, there we Yes, we've begun. It is time to wage war against vegetables and fruit. Let's try adventure mode. Let's try the training mode. The basics. We know what the storyline is all about now, but how do we play? How do we wage war and kill those filthy vegetables? The king is going to tell us how to do this. You see, we launch our troops from barrels because our troops can't actually move on account of them being fruit. Don't know how they built the barrels, but... Technology is an amazing thing, I guess. All right, let's. There's a bit of bit of text here, so let's just 
get to the... Yep, enough talking, let's do this. Okay, so... This is... Yeah, we'll zoom out. Our fruit's in this barrel, we want to... Let's see, maneuver... Oh, there we go. We want to maneuver the trajectory. First, we want to get the star. I did it. Our fruit is a destructive force of nature as it's in motion. Once it reaches, uh, once it loses motion, however, it fades away. It dissolves. It's useless. So is the life of fruit. That's a dummy that's imitating a vegetable. It's a very clever disguise. But we killed it anyway. At this rate, we will be a vegetable murdering machine. Okay, so we have to sort of... We have to sort of shoot something. Catapult something, slingshot something into a structure, and then the structure will collapse? I think is what it's saying? We have to shoot our... Angry, no, up, our upset fruit at the, at the structures. Hmm, oh, that blocked me. Let's see if we can get that star. Oh? Uh, not quite. Let's try a little bit more power, maybe. No, that didn't work. It seems that I only really... Hmm, I only really get the trajectory that I want if I use the recommended power level, which you can see on that meter. If I don't use that, then... I end up not uh, shooting where I want to shoot. Okay, let's forget the star, maybe. Because my fruit are getting angrier by the second. Let's just kill that vegetable. It's what they crave. It's what they hunger. They hunger for revenge. Not stars. <laughs> That's probably a copyrighted sound. Not gonna say anything, but... Might wanna th I don't know about using that sound effect in a product that you're charging money for. All right, there's that red gill. We're going to sacrifice one of our fruits in order to get that star. That fruit died a horrible, lonely death in the depths as it was torn apart by red fish. But they knew what they were getting into when they signed up. Don't feel sorry for them. They're heroes. So does this game look familiar at all? Maybe like something you might be controlling on a phone with a touchscreen? I don't know. Something like that. I don't know why I'd think that. Just came to mind. Yeah, if we take too many, too many shots, we will fail. I mean, as far as... The game looks nice, you know? As far as the graphics, it does look better, more polished than a lot of Xbox Live indie games. And I suppose, you know, just saying that it plays a lot like a game like, you know, maybe a certain game that sold a whole lot on mobile platforms? I don't know. Maybe that's not a bad thing, because maybe you shouldn't consider that to be copying and more... More along the lines of... Of that type of game being a genre, you know? That's what they say about Minecraft games, Minecraft clones. That Minecraft is not just a game that people copy, but it is a genre now. Vector-based sandbox is what it's called, I understand. Just because it looks like Minecraft doesn't mean it's a clone, so they say. I guess you could consider it to be the same, same deal. All right, time to time to switch things up a little bit. Time to make things a bit more complex. Mm, 
we have full control over this barrel that we start with, but we can shoot into these relay barrels, which will let us... Well, it let us do that, but that really wasn't what I, what I wanted to do. You get the idea, I think. Right, I don't have a power meter when I shoot these, so I don't have the type of control that I have in the original barrel. That was not good at all. That's I sacrificed that fruit for no reason. You see, I'm I'm not hitting it right on the power. So I'm missing this yeah, there we go. Alright, I think that's gonna be enough. Of Okay, I was about to say, I think that's enough of Produce Wars, but x -Blake said it for me. They said, no, maybe stop playing this. Well, you can see what it is. It's Produce Wars. I'm not sure if you want to play a game like this on a console. It seems all right for what it is. It's not a game I'd be interested in playing, but, I mean, hey, it seems pretty well put together. So it looks nice, sounds nice. I can't really say anything bad about it. Um, other than it's not really the type of game I'd be interested in, but it's, like I said, a lot more well put together than pretty much most anything we see on Xbox Live Indie Games these days, so... What can I say? It's Produce Wars. Probably worth a look at, even if you're not that interested in this type of game. Maybe, I don't know, maybe just try the demo out, see what you think. And the final game on this week of Xbox Live Indie Games. It says math science. On the Xbox dashboard, it's called Learn Math and Sciences. You remember last week when we were learning all about English and sentence structure. Well, our teacher is not here. Hmm. I guess we're expected to learn math and science on our own. Well, I mean, there are so many different things we could learn. We could learn about astronomy and space. Those planets are to scale, definitely. We can learn about the universe. What about Universe One? Everything that exists make up makes up the universe. I mean, whoever is putting out these titles is doing a service on Xbox Live Indie Games, putting out this valuable information all in one place that you can look up whenever you turn your Xbox on. It's presented in such a fascinating way as well. I can't... I'm bursting with excitement to know what Learn Math and Science is, is going to tell me next. The presentation, unparalleled on this service. You see, like it says here, universal, universal forces. The moons, Io and Europa, are seen here, traveling across the face of Jupiter... We can see them right here. You see them, right? They're, right? They're right there. You're not looking hard enough. It says we can see them right here. I'm not about to stand here and listen to you say learn math and sciences is some kind of liar. We could see them. The Big Bang. All right, done. We know all we need to know about the Big Bang right now. I mean, we could spend days, weeks, months even, going over the information that is contained in this this tiny app on Xbox Live Indie Games. We could while away the nights learning about Andromeda, our neighbor. And maybe try to figure out where the makers of this app copied and pasted all this text from. Who
Whew. It's nonstop information when we're learning about astronomy and space. What about biology, though? That is an f- amazing diagram on that, on that chalk. Is it a whiteboard? I guess. It's- what does it have to tell us about biochemistry? All right. We're now experts on biochemistry. We know all we need to know. Oh, gr- dinosaurs. There we go. Now we're getting into the meat of this. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Says so right there. Maybe you could use more pictures of Tyrannosaurus. I'm just making a suggestion. I mean, f- dinosaurs is a very fascinating subject. I have not seen anything present such a in-depth education of dinosaurs in such a interesting way that makes learning easy and fun as learn math and sciences. Uh Uh-oh, earth sciences, too much to give away for free. Whoops. No, I didn't mean to exit that app. I mean, I'm sure we could have learned so much more about learning math and sciences. How much information could be kept from us in the trial mode? Who can say? I don't, I couldn't say myself. All I could say is that that was the last game that was released on Xbox Live Indie Games for the week of October the 27th to November the 2nd, 2013. Nine games out this week. Tuner Out, Critter Skater, Heart and Mind 2, Starfighter X, Hurdle Turtle 2, Explodables 3D, Ultimate Drunken Warrior, Produce Wars, Learn Math and Sciences. We had our Silver Dollar Game of the Week with Tuner Out. Probably, I would say, the, the best game of the week was Produce Wars, even though, like I said, not really a game I was very interested in. It was the best put-together game of anything we saw here. And... Well, Learn Math and Science is going to give us information that we'll be able to use for the rest of our lives. That's the kind of enrichment that you get from Xbox Live Indie Games. And Explodimals will stick with me forever in a very different way. I feel like I want to want to get a donut for some reason, all of a sudden. Maybe, maybe look out when I do that for some kind of purple rolling head coming after me, wanting my donut, willing to do anything to get it. What's that? Is, do I hear a hissing, like a, a lit fuse? Coming out of the purple head. The purple head cannot be reasoned with. It does not ask me for the donut. No, it just immediately begins vomiting lit bombs everywhere in some sort of mindless attempt to get the donut. It detects the donut. It knows it's there. It doesn't know how. It doesn't know who. It doesn't know where. It knows it's there, and it knows it must vomit up bombs until the donut is his. Any people or animals that are in its way, well, that's just too bad. Yes, explodables will stay with us for some time to come. But that's it for this week in Xbox Live Indie Games from October the 27th to November the 2nd, 2013. Stay safe out there when you eat a donut. I'll see you next week.